Let me now formally welcome Dr. Ganesh Natarajan. Uh, he really needs very little introduction, but, but uh, uh, let me summarize very briefly. He has led two very successful corporate success stories, both Aptec and Zensar. He has been the ex-chairman of NASCOM, as well as with NASCOM Foundation. And more recently, he is the founder of 5F World, which is a platform dedicated to uh, skills, uh, skills development, social enterprises, investment, mentoring, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Also, is the chairman of Skills Alpha, Pune City Connect, and I can go on and on and on. But possibly most importantly, he has been a very active supporter of the Bharat Initiative, uh, uh, Bharat Summit, and the Bharat Initiative that we are driving. And Ganesh, thank you very, very much for helping kick this year's summit off. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Nipun. Ganesh. Uh, I would like to start uh, by having you help us take a wide angle view on Bharat. Uh, while I laid out a couple of priorities uh, uh, that the Bharat uh, volunteers have been working on, I'd like you to you know, help us with your perspective, given your ex extensive experience, especially across both corporates and social ventures. What do you suggest would accelerate progress overall in Bharat? See, I I think the main issue, Nipun, is that many of us talk about Bharat without having lived the experience. Mm -hmm. Extremely important. I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate because I grew up in a little village in Jharkhand. So I really have seen Bharat from the in inside, if you will. And I think the big problem is that a lot of our design, a lot of our thinking is very much oriented towards, if not the top seven cities, yeah. top 20, 30 cities. Bharat, as we all know, is 650,000 or more villages. It's a whole bunch of maybe 400, 500 small towns, which is where the real India lives. And I think we need to understand that the solutions we think about for a completely, I mean, not, not completely, but a, a Wi-Fi economy that we have in the cities is not quite going to work. The solutions we think of and dream of and write of in English are not going to work. And we really have to be inclusive. And I think one of the reasons I did 5F World was to say that, look, having spent a lot of time in global training and global software, Let's try and understand what the country really needs and make that happen. So I think Bharat is about being there, is about understanding, being empathetic and making it happen. Wonderful, Ganesh. And, and that resonates with uh, some conversation that we had the last year as well, where people spoke about you have to understand what it needs, what it is to be a teacher in Bharat or what, what is it to be a farmer in Bharat, right? Uh, or to really live their life uh, uh, and, and you're resonating that as well. Uh, how do you think we should be approaching that, Ganesh? I mean, I, I, you know, what you speak about is, is wonderful. I think everyone would agree with that. What do you think we should do? How can entrepreneurs or potential entrepreneurs in the Bangalore experience some of that? No, I think what you need to do is realize there's a big market out there. I mean, I'm not asking you to be patriotic. I'm not asking you to have a social consciousness. That's not required. But what you re really need to see is, and I won't use cliches like bottom of the pyramid, there is a part of gold at the bottom of the pyramid, but most important, there is money to be made. And even the nine investments we have done in 5F World are all about people who are leveraging digital technology for Bharat. So to give you, I mean, to give you just a couple of examples, when I mean, one is a company called Live History India Digital by Minnie Menon, who was formerly UTV and CNBC. And Minnie is doing some amazing work. She's created this entire platform which brings to life 1,000 unknown destinations in Bharat. And she's got millions of followers. She's got lots of Facebook downloads, raising multiple rounds of money. And she's being, she is very successful. It's still two years into her life cycle. Similarly, another company we invested in called Skills Alpha. Skills Alpha is your classical ed tech platform, AI-enabled, personalization, adaptive learning, etc. But they chose to focus on Bharat. And today, if you look at the 12,000 people who use Skills Alpha, People from slum communities in urban India, they're just getting into rural in terms of mentoring and actually providing career counseling there. And the entire thing is happening through technology. So I'm just saying that to understand the opportunity, you need to understand what people are advertising, which what people are really looking for. And once you do that, I think, and you can be multi-tiered in terms of your approach to the market. I think the business models you create can create magic very, very quickly in this country. So how do we pair them up, Ganesh? I mean, clearly somebody in Bangalore is not going to have enough knowledge as you speak, right, of, of what is needed in a small town. Uh, but the 
but a person sitting there, a person living there, does not have the ecosystem connects, does not have the technical bandwidth, does not have the other resources that are possibly needed to, to make this innovative business model come alive. So what do you think, would, how do you think we should go forward? See, I think first of all, we should ride on this wonderful bandwagon called the Trillion Dollar Digital India. Because I mean, I was involved from NASCOM along with McKinsey Global Institute and the Ministry of IT to really conceptualize this. And as many of you would know, if you know the Trillion Dollar Digital India, it's only about maybe a 350 billion out of that will be the IT services and BPO and engineering services industry growing from today's 200 billion to 350 billion. The real heft will come, 650 billion, will come from IT enabled services for Bharat. I mean, you've seen a fantastic example which the world is talking about, which is the whole UPI, Aadhaar, what's today called JAM, the whole Jandhan, Aadhaar and uh, mobile revolution. And the mobile revolution is amazing, but are we really using it? I mean, you can fully expect that Geo will launch 5G in the country very, very soon. The Prime Minister in the Independence Day speech promised again about the NOFN, which is the National, National Optical Fiber Network. So whether it's Bharat Net or NOFN, that's one physical digital infrastructure that will be laid out. So I think the Bangalore entrepreneur needs to understand that when that is laid out, when 250,000 gram panchayats are fully connected with 100 Mbps bandwidth, what's the opportunity? And that opportunity will go way beyond just financial services or uh, rural finance. It will go into education, skills, employment exchanges. I mean, everything that we've actually written about in the Digital India Report. And just pick a sector. I mean, if you pick a sector, each one of them will have multiple opportunities. And I can promise you as an entrepreneur, if you get your business model right and you're able to maybe deliver value for 5 million people mm -hmm. in the cities of India, then you've created a business model which can work in uh, in Latin America, it can work in various parts of Asia, it can absolutely work in Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. So you're creating a model which is unique and which the emerging economies will lap up. So I would strongly suggest reach out, maybe find a partner in rural India who kind of gets it in terms of the opportunity and work on making that happen. And I think that's very, very big. And to combine entrepreneurship and enable entrepreneurship and also I think the whole point of tools for rural India you have a winning proposition right out there. Ganesh, that's a good suggestion to, to find a partner out there, right? I mean, Niti Ayog and Amitabh Kant were on the session last year in 2020. And one of the suggestions that came up was that I think all the incubators that Niti Ayog is setting up as an example need to have, uh, uh, you know, a cross connection between domain expertise and technology expertise. So I think they def definitely need the technology expertise that startups are looking for but how do we provide domain expertise? So one of the things that they have started to do, and I don't know whether you resonate with that idea, is to have 20, 25%, in fact, more of them are, should be 50%, right? Should all be in smaller towns. So they actually are able to then harness the local communities uh, as a way of going forward. So maybe if I was to take your, your suggestion forward, it would be that I think we should encourage more incubators in Bharat. We should encourage more uh, physically located in Bharat, not an incubator based in Bangalore, developing solutions for for Jharkhand as an example, right? But but really uh, uh, being physically there, yet being connected with with hubs like Bangalore and Mumbai and NCR, and reinvent the model. I mean, I remember reinvent the model. Right. Yeah, we did this in the '90s in Aptec. Uh, yeah. And at that time, like very much like any other institution, we said, "Oh my God, computer education yeah. work in the top 40 cities." And before you knew it, we had kind of saturated the top 40 cities with about maybe 300 centers. But we went on in the next four years to have 1,200 centers in India and another 400 in 42 countries outside. Because we rediscovered the small model. So by the, when I left Aptec in 2001, we had plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D centers. Each of the centers had a solid core, which was you know, teaching people how to use computers successfully. But it was very, very customized. I mean, if you went to Madikere in Karnataka, mm -hmm. The way we taught it, the technology we used, the languages we used, everything was different. At the end of it, you still turned out a Madikere professional could still join Infosys as much as somebody from Rice College um, in Bangalore could join. And I think that was a strength of really getting in and understanding the model and making the tweaks required for a young person to do it. We are to, we are to, today doing it in one of our companies, Global Talent Track. They work primarily in tier three, tier four India, and they're finding there's as much intelligence and sometimes more commitment coming out of the small towns as there is coming out of the large cities. Yeah. Large city guys have aspirations to travel abroad. The small town guys want to work in the Pune's and Bangalore's and Delhi's 
and they're willing to really slog. So I think we have a big opportunity there. We have 400 million Indians waiting to see success happen in their own lives. And if we as entrepreneurs don't make it happen, who will make it happen? Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, Ganesh, moving to a slightly different topic, and I know you've been a strong votary for redistribution of jobs, uh, pushing roles into smaller smaller towns. We did have a conversation earlier within NPC Bharat Summit on work from small towns as well, which is now that, and, and thanks to COVID, I think we all realized that we can work from anywhere. So how do you look at that topic? And mass entrepreneurship, self-employment, these are nice words. Uh, and and uh, I don't know what you feel, but they've probably not worked as much in the last few years. But there is a need. So no, you're, ab- you're absolutely right, Nipun. And I, I think there is there's one uh, set of problems and a set of opportunities. The opportunity you mentioned. I mean, with more and more people, if the whole IT industry is now willing to work from anywhere. I mean, I've heard of people recruiting in Patna and Lucknow and everywhere else, which is fantastic. That's the opportunity. The tragedy we all saw in the migrant worker crisis. I mean, a lot of people went back to the Gohatis and the Ranchis of the world and found that job creation had not happened there. Mm-hmm. It's a tragedy because we really haven't distributed jobs. I mean, my guru, Arun Myra, who was in the planning commission and of course has done this future of jobs work for both CII and actually spoke at the executive council of NASCOM about it. He's talked about, and there is a, a, a real economic theory to show that if you're able to distribute jobs around the country, you will create, like America did fairly successfully, like China has done. I mean, in the last maybe 10 years with the with the Dalians and the Tianjins and the Wuxis and the Shuzaos, I mean, which were much, much beyond the success stories of Beijing and Shanghai and Shenzhen. So if we can do that and we can enable this to happen, the distribution of jobs will create, I mean, the current inequity we have in wealth. I mean, we're seeing it even in the farmer crisis. 85% of our farmers just can't buy into some of the on some of the things that are on offer, which is the reason why you see this big crisis happening. But if you dig one level deep, you'll find that, look, if you have some structures that work for the small, the medium, and the large, then you'll make it happen. And you're absolutely right, because we all talk about millions of entrepreneurs, but we must also not forget that entrepreneurs without some core elements, and I was, I mean, I heard my good friend Rajan Anandan talking about Sequoia Search, for instance, and he also said the same thing that, look, I mean, if you're really looking at people to succeed, we want entrepreneurs who can take one, one million to five million in one year and not one million to two. Mm-hmm. Easy to say. I mean, sitting on the other side of the table, you can say that. But I'm seeing companies, companies we are investing in, wanting to make that huge leap of faith. And that can happen only if we want to scale. But that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm less impressed about multiple small entrepreneurs. I'm more interested in people who have the scope to really define their problem very well and the scale to make those kind of, you know, jumps, jumps happen in revenues, profits, value and everything else. We don't want anecdotal evidence. We want large scale evidence that this can and will happen. And and in, in, uh, in Bharat, uh, maybe the entrepreneur is not exactly the same type of entrepreneur that you find in Bangalore and Pune, right? Maybe it's not necessarily a tech entrepreneur. Maybe it's a question of setting up my own tailoring shop. Maybe uh, it is self-employment. Maybe it is, you know, uh, standing, learning to stand on my own feet. Uh, and the panel that's going to follow us right after this, Ganesh, is actually going to be debating how do we uh, enable things like that. But in your mind, what, and, and if you may give us a couple of suggestions, what are the things that would drive this? Because clearly you don't like the sight of a million people standing to collect a bank form to fill up, a, you know, to, to, uh, uh, for a bank interview or for a bank job. Why can't they do something on their own? So no, but we, but they need to have the, see, that's what, that's what I'm worried about now. It's very nice to say, don't, don't ask for a job, create one and all that is very nice hype. We also need to educate people to be better, better, better uh, people. I mean, uh, be better mm-hmm. entrepreneurs. Because if you really look at an entrepreneur, I mean, what does a great entrepreneur do? First of all, he has a very powerful idea, and he or she is very passionate about it. Then she goes out and says that, look, let's build a business model, and this is where it's extremely important. The reason we were so successful in Aptech is we had that four-part mm-hmm. business model for each tier of city, if you will, and then we created a fifth for the overseas market. So we need to create business models that work given the customer segment that you're choosing and you could choose multiple segments. The third, of course, we all talk about it and that I think that's what Sequoia is doing so well, giving people a longer funding runway. I mean, you can't have one partner perpetually looking for money and the other partner trying to build the business. I mean, you've got to have a satisfaction that look, we've raised enough money for the next two years 
and we can go experiment and build that model. And then I think you need the ecosystem. And when we keep going to government, I mean, Mr. Vittal, who is one of the architects of our industry, used to say that when the going gets tough, the tough go to government. And that's no, no longer adequate. I think the government can at best give you maybe preferential purchasing, which we've been ta talking about in NASCOM. Maybe the government can build the ecosystem. All that we should ask the government is, build me the physical, digital, and social infrastructure. The roads, the internet highways, and of course, social infrastructure that you don't want to get murdered if you go into a small town, which is very obvious. So once you have that and you have the confidence that anywhere in Bharat can be my, my theater, my platform, then once you're an entrepreneur and you're kind of getting these sums right, if you will, you can succeed. But you need to go out there and make it happen. That's why I said, no, I love, I mean, right now we are nurturing a young woman called, um, I mean, I want to mention her name. She's from Satara in rural Maharashtra. But she has a model for working with young women all over the country with scales from Pune to Parbhani to wherever else you want. So we need people like her to mm -hmm. say, look, I know that this country can be a recipient of my product and not only worry for solving for the urban rich. I think then we will... So, so, if, if, you, so if you take that example, the, the, the woman that you mentioned, right? And if you peel the onion and just say, what, what was a missing ingredient that you guys helped her with? Uh, that could be scale. That could be applied to 50 other people or a thousand other people. What is that? Is it skills? Is it motivation? Is it... Something. They, I mean, she had the right idea. I mean, she actually solved, you know, a psychological problem in adolescents and young women, and in fact, even young men across the country. And she started off, I mean, right now she has a big contract in Jharkhand. So she's doing it for the entire Jharkhand. She wants to do it in even urban, urban cities. But essentially, she had no missing ingredient in her passion. That's mm -hmm. why the idea was there, the passion was there. What she didn't have was a business model. So I think what we will help her is, what are the business models that will work for Jharkhand? What is the business model that will work for the city of Mumbai? And how do you kind of mix and match the two without losing the core of what you want to do? And, and talking of women, there is a, Ganesh, there's a huge feminization that's happening of rural India with, with the men having migrated in large numbers to the cities, right? So uh, any thoughts on that as we wrap up in a minute, maybe? Well, I don't think there is, I mean, first, first of all, being very, very, always been very gender neutral in everything I hire, everything I Interestingly, out of the nine companies we have funded, uh, eight are run by women, but it's purely by accident, I promise you. Okay. And, so, I mean, and they are you know, right from small towns to cities like Pune and Mumbai. So my own feeling is anybody can do this. And don't worry about gender, don't worry about what. But as I said, define your problem, get a team that is complementary. I mean, we all try and you know, get college mates together and make it happen and we can complete each other's sentences. But I think the most successful teams, whether it's in large corporations, or in entrepreneurs are those you know very very supportive mutually kind of collaborative teams you know it better than anybody else nipun and i'm sure many of the people who have succeeded here will know it but the young entrepreneur as i said have the passion build a team don't try and do everything yourself and then you can be successful both in rural and in urban india both in india and in bharat and that's our objective thank you ganesh thank you very much and those are inspiring words truly and will i think everyone would take away a lot of uh, uh, good thoughts from the, the ideas that you share. So thank you very much for coming and kick, helping us kick off the Bharat Summit, Ganesh. And thank you. And thank you, Nipun. And thank you, NPC. I think it's always a great platform to speak on. Oh, wonderful.